Hello. In this video, we'll talk about neural networks and about connectionism, which is an approach to the study of cognitive capacities that, since the 1980s, has been the main competitor to the classical computational view. One way of introducing connectionism is by comparing it with the classical view. Classical AI is based on the idea that, at a high level of abstraction at least, the mind works like a digital computer. So, how do you find out how some part of the mind works? Well, you find out which program it is running. And the idea, in fact, is that thinking is like running a program. But then, what is involved in running a program? Well, it involves the manipulation of symbols according to formal rules. Connectionists see themselves as providing an alternative to the classical idea of computation. This alternative combines different goals, approaches, and intellectual traditions, such as the tradition of associationism in modern philosophy, represented by John Locke, David Hume, and John Stuart Mill, which postulated that the association of ideas was the basic engine of our mental life. It also features what we could call brain-like architecture, Connectionist devices are built on an explicit analogy with the brain. They are composed of units that are modeled after neurons, and they have connections to each other, which, to some extent, are supposed to resemble synapses. Connectionism also draws on a computational conception of the brain and the mind that, rather than being inspired by the work of Alan Turing, follows in the footsteps of the neurophysiologist Warren McCulloch and the logician Walter Pitts, who in 1943 published an article called A Logical Calculus of the Ideas Imminent in Nervous Activity. In this work, they portrayed neurons as small digital devices capable of implementing diverse Boolean functions, such as negation, conjunction, and disjunction, and which indeed would work analogously to the logic gates of present-day computers. Later on, psychologist Frank Rosenblatt would develop the main idea of the McCulloch-Pitts neuron into what he called the perception. The perceptron is the next big chapter in the saga of biologically inspired computation. A perceptron, as we'll see, already contains the elements of a neural network, but with a single layer of connections. Rosenblatt's perception went beyond Boolean functions and was used for classification problems. Rosenblatt actually built a physical perceptron machine, which today is on display at the Smithsonian. It had, as you can see in the middle, a set of potentiometers to vary the weights of the connections. He then hooked up the whole monstrosity to a camera, which had a resolution of 400 pixels. So the result was an automatic device that could learn to classify data from visual sources. The device seems to have been a little unwieldy, though. However, his most durable contribution was the provision of a learning algorithm for his perceptron, also called the perceptron algorithm, as well as a proof that it works for an important class of problems. Alas, it turned out that Rosenblatt's single-layer perceptrons were too simple to implement uh, many important Boolean functions, and moreover that even if he built a perceptron with multiple layers which were complex enough to compute those functions, there was no way for the perceptron to learn them, since his rule only worked for single-layer networks. For these and other reasons, research on neural networks stalled until it saw a resurgence in the 70s and 80s with the development of learning algorithms for multi-layer networks. And with the publication of the two volumes of the, va of the famous Parallel Distributed Processing by Rommelhart and McClelland, which coincided with the rise of the connectionist movement, which is at present healthy and vigorous. Okay, see you in the next video. Bye. <laughs>